Good morning, my name's Lucy. Uh, I'm an artist working in Burryport in Carmarthenshire. Um, and I'm going to show you um, a technique uh, which involves making photographs um, from household materials. Um, and the process is called um, amphotypes. Uh, and it was first invented by Sir John Herschel in 1842. And it's done by using photosensitive um, material from plants. Um, I'm going to use here um, beetroot juice. Uh, and I've got a little sponge on a stick, uh, but a, a sponge would be perfectly fine um, for doing this. Um, beetroot's nice and easy because when you buy a packet of beetroot, you can just squeeze out the juice without making too much mess. Um, but you can use um, any photosensitive material from plants. So if you're using leaves, berries, uh, you can be quite experimental, but the idea is that you need to crush them down possibly in the pestle and mortar or with a masher. You strain them to get rid of all the lumpy bits and then you just have the pure juice. Um, so you need some watercolour paper like this. I'm going to cut this A3 piece into four. It's a good idea to let these dry in a dark place somewhere so that you don't have too much um, sun bleaching the surface uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try on these examples that I showed you earlier I put three layers of um, the, the juice on the paper and let it dry in between so I coated it once let it dry coated it the other way let it dry coated it the other way let it dry and then I put my uh, plant material on the top, which in this case was leaves, and exposed it to the sun. Um, so let me just show you, how, show you how to coat the paper. Hi there, um, so these have dried now. This one has got one layer of beetroot. This one's got two layers of beetroot. And this last one, I'm going to add my third layer of beetroot before I expose them in the sun. Okay, so when you add the, um, the layers of beetroot, try and alternate the direction that you're doing the stroke. So I'm just going to leave these to dry now, back in a dark place, and then I'm going to expose them. Um, okay, so my, um, my beetroot paper is drying at the moment. Uh, and in the cupboard under my stairs and uh, the next step is to decide on what I want to um, put on the paper uh, and expose to the sun. So um, in my previous examples I found some plant matter, leaves and things. Um, I find the best things at work is um, shapes that have got definite kind of silhouettes. Um, they just seem to sort of um, make a better mark on the paper. Uh, what I thought I'd try this time is I found some interesting man-made shapes. I've got a, this is a coaster. Uh, I found a trivet, uh, which is a kind of iron metallic thing. Uh, so I'll put that on one of the pieces. Um, I've also got um, a painting on plastic. So this is a piece of acetate that I've sanded and then painted on. And then you can see I've kind of scratched originally. These are, well, these are kind of daffodils. So I've painted the plastic and then I've scratched through to make the drawing. I don't know how well these will come out on the photographic beetroot paper, but um, I thought it would be interesting to have a go. And then I've also got an acetate of um, a friend of mine <laughs> jumping up and down on the beach. Um, so I just thought I'd try all of these things. You might have some things that you might have a bag that's printed with a logo, you know, in black. Or um, the key is to have something that's solid enough that won't let the light through. Uh, so that's what you should be thinking of when uh, when you're choosing your objects. So um, I'm just going to go and expose these now. Um, you can do it outside as long as the weather's fine. You need a plastic, a piece of plastic acetate to put on the top to hold everything in place. Um, another top tip is to make sure that um, the objects don't move. They need to be perfectly still for the whole time that you ex um, expose them. 
Um, I'm, the weather's suddenly turned actually, so I'm going to put mine in the greenhouse just so that they still have got the light, um, but also so that um, they don't blow around and um, they don't get wet. So hopefully that will work and uh, I'm just going to go and do that now. Okay, so here we are uh, in my greenhouse. Uh, as you can see, I've arranged the, uh, the piece of perspex over um, the, uh, the, the beetroot paper. Um, this one I haven't put underneath the paper because um, it's a little bit lumpy. So I've put my, my three objects there that I felt needed to be kept still under the perspex. And this one, because it's so heavy and it's got these kind of lumpy bits on it, um, I've put that on the top and that'll weigh it down nicely as well. Um, it's a good idea, if you do decide on putting flowers in or leaves, um, it's a good idea to weigh um, your perspex down or glass gently, um, just so that the, the flowers or the leaves will squash down a little bit um, and you'll get a much better effect. Um, the, the more contact it has with the paper, um, the sharper your image will be. Um, so I'm going to leave these now. The weather's gone a little bit dull, so um, luckily I'm in the greenhouse in case it does rain. Um, I'm expecting it to take one or two, maybe three days if it carries on dull like this. Um, the other um, anther types that I did the other day um, was in bright sunshine and I exposed them for two days. I think one day would have been enough, but I did two days of bright sunshine um, just to see how well they would come out and uh, yeah, and they worked really well. Uh, so we'll see how these go. So these two um, examples were with the one layer of beetroot that worked out quite well. Um, and they were left out for uh, a day in bright sunshine. This was two layers of beetroot left for the same amount of time. You can just about make the daffodil out. And this one didn't work at all. This was three layers of beetroot.